And hello and welcome to the Gary Dunn Show for November 15th, 2016. I'm your host, Gary Smith. On today's show, we're going to be talking to a very happy Coach Dunn about the uh, little game on Saturday that determined the PSAC Championship. We'll talk about that game, look at those highlights, and then uh, since we're in playoff time, we'll take a look at the Super Region 1 playoff field and, and talk a little bit about uh, a possible opponent in two weeks. But without further ado, uh, we have the studio lights off. The, what's illuminating us is Coach Dunn smile. Coach Congratulations. Uh, heck, of a, heck of a victor on Saturday, and congratulations on the program's first PSAC championship in uh, almost a decade. Thank you. It's great to be back another week. Obviously, extremely proud of our guys and, and how they've played and how they've prepared all year. It was, it was a great weekend here in California, and, and just thrilled to be back for another week. And uh, obviously, Saturday was a, a huge game, a game that, you know, you have at home. It's the first time the PSAC championship game has been at Adamson Stadium in, in about a decade. Um, you're playing a Quidstown team that, you know, they started slow, but they ran off seven straight wins. And it's a team that historically Cal hasn't played that much. It's just one of those anomalies in the scheduling. But going into Saturday, uh, how, was the, how was the week of practice like? And, and what did you think whenever you guys finally took the field on Saturday for that game? Yeah, I, I think our guys have practiced well all year long. They, they really prepared well. I thought our defensive coaches and players really had a great plan against a, a really good offense that, that loves to run the football. Uh, but I thought the guys prepared well and, and were ready to play Saturday. And, and there was a lot of excitement all week for our guys because this was the ultimate goal for them. You know, when we set our goals in preseason camp, it was to win the PSAC championship and, and the opportunity was right in front of them. And on Saturday coming into that game, you know, statistically, if you looked at the tail of the tape, obviously your offense has done what it's done, all your defense done what's done. Quidstown's offense and defense kind of middle of the road. And I think one of the, the, the amazing things and, and great things to see about championship caliber teams is, you know, when a team faces a little bit of adversity, you know, that first quarter was a little tight back and forth, but then your team has done what it's done the entire year, uh, dominated the second quarter, and by halftime it was a 28 nothing lead. Yeah, I thought it was a really big switch in the game was the two possessions right before the half. We scored two, two touchdowns and 14 points within two minutes, um, and we've kind of that's kind of been us all year long. I could name – game after game where we, we scored right before the half to kind of take momentum. And, and I thought our offensive coaches did a really good job of, of managing the clock. Uh, and we actually had all three timeouts in our pocket at halftime. We didn't have to use any of them because our guys did such a good job. But I thought that was a, a, a big point in the game is getting 14 right before the half. And then our, our defense stopping the run all day long to hold that bunch under 100 yards when I think they were averaging 230 was another big factor in that game. Well, your defense had the, uh, the PSAC championship game MVP, Luke Krapchek, and you know, his stat sheets, when they were reading, um, reading them off at the end of the game, 13 some tackles, tackles for losses, sacks, forced fumbles. I mean, it, it did not seem that Kutztown had any green space or any, any place to operate that entire game, and that's just a credit to the, the defense, the players, the coaches, and that they took control of that game early on. Yeah, Luke, Luke had a tremendous game. He was all over the field, and I think he'll be the first one to tell you that the, the guys up front did a really, really good job. You know, they've got a, a great offensive line, and I thought our, our front four really controlled them and let, let Luke and, and Devontae Suber make some plays. But Luke was, was unblockable and, and had a tremendous game. But, you know, our guys on defense play with a lot of confidence right now, and, and, and when they get rolling, they're, they're a fun group to watch. There was one play that probably my favorite play of the year. All five of Kutztown's offensive linemen had their backs to the line of scrimmage as <laughs> all four of our guys were sacking their quarterback, and it's we're going to get that pitcher to hang it up here uh, <laughs> next year. It was a great pitcher, but I, our guys played with tremendous effort all day long. And I tell you what, Coach, at halftime, you know, we do the halftime stats, and I came, I had to go check on a camera, but I came back to the truck, and I actually thought that, the, the graphic person was wrong because it was just so lopsided and it's just such a small number. And that's got to be a great thing for, for your team and also as a coaching staff, knowing that, you know, that other team this entire season is not going to get a lot. So that really minimizes their margin for error and they got to play a perfect game to even stay in the game with you guys. Yeah, I thought our defense and, and really our special teams did a great job of creating short fields. And we talked a couple, a little bit ago about the 14 points before the half, I think both those drives started between the 40 and the 50 yard line. And when your defense can get a three and out right before the half and special teams does a great job, um, it was a total team victory on all three sides, of, you know, all three phases of the game that, that really brought us home that championship. And on the offensive side of the ball, you know, Michael Keir, Gary Brown, the same, same numbers. But I tell you what, yeah, if you look at the stat sheet, a lot of names on that. It, it seemed like Kutztown, 
They would try and key on taking one piece away, a second piece away, but there's three or four other pieces that you guys can go to. Yeah, I, I thought we ran the ball effectively. Um, and obviously, Kier, I think, had five touchdown mm -hmm. passes to four different receivers. Luke Smorey had a big catch in the first half. Uh, we, had, we had a freshman get his first mm -hmm. touchdown of the game, and, and we call him Sauce. <laughs> uh, Gary Braun caught two, and then Tom Green had a big one. So when you can spread the ball around and make them defend the entire team, as well as our running game, we had uh, four tailbacks carry the ball on Saturday. I know three different ones, I think, score touchdowns or, or two different ones, but it was it was really a balanced offense, and, th and that's what we strive for. And that touchdown pass to Luke Smorey was the first of the two touchdowns in the last two minutes of the first half, and that was on a fourth down, and I think three or four wasn't the fourth and yep. one, and, and that was a great play call. Whenever he put it up there, I'm like, and, and that – Basically, whenever that touchdown happened, you can kind of see the Quidstown sideline. A little bit of air got let out of their sails. Yeah, Coach Salisbury did, does a great job of calling our plays and, and trusting Mike to put us in the best situation possible. And I tell you, it was an incredible throw. It's the only place Mike could have put it. And Luke Smorey is, is unbelievable at making those catches over the shoulder and, and actually getting two feet in bounds was pretty impressive. But, you know, that, that was – all built by the offensive line, giving those guys time to do that in a, in a fourth down situation. So, you know, hats off to those guys. And you're going to see that highlight coming up in just a few minutes uh, when we show the highlights from Saturday. But I, you probably had about a three-yard circle. He could have put that in, and he probably put it right in the dead center of that bullseye. Yeah, unbelievable. It was a great throw. And, and you know, we trust Mike to make plays. That's, you know, if we're in that kind of questionable area on fourth down, we're going to let Mike – Put us in a good situation. Chad had a, uh, Coach Salisbury had a great play called, and, and it just happened to work out. And Coach, you know, you, we've mentioned it before on the on the show. So I see you played here. How how like what does this mean to you coming back first year and bringing a PSAC title to California? Yeah, you know, when I was here, it was always the '84 team. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you heard about the '84 team, and you get to see those guys come back. And then obviously they had a bunch of success with Coach Luckhart after after we left. But just to be a part of of putting another banner up and, and, and our guys for to reward them for how much work it takes for a college football season. It's year round. It's, you know, it's 6 a.m. workouts in the off season. It's, it's weights four, three, four days a week. You know, it's preparing all summer long and for them to, to put their names in the record books along with the, the other championship teams. It's, it, I just couldn't be happier for our guys. I tell you what, it's a good thing. Uh, Guys still care of business got that by because it might take two weeks to get Gatorade <laughs> reordered because that, that scene at the end of the game on the Gatorade bath, I think every coach got it. I mean, that was just such an amazing scene just to, as a fan to watch that and see you guys celebrate on that field. That's, that's what it means to be a Vulcan. Yeah, absolutely. It, it was cold, I'll tell you that. <laughs> uh, and I thought I kind of dodged it for a little bit there. And once we got under a minute, I was like, I think we're going to be all right. And, and, and that just shows you the relationship that, that our coaches have with their players. It wasn't just about me. It was all of our assistants. They were trying to get everybody. And they, our players did a nice job, but it, it, was, it was a lot of fun. Well, you have to watch uh, the CTV broadcast, Coach, because that last minute we had a camera on it. They, that was a pretty organized effort from the really? team. Yeah, they, they, I mean, they had things drawn up, I and mean, you had pe people uh, cre creating a diversion. So you may want to check that out, see if anybody has yeah. to wake up early, uh, to maybe run a little laps to make you uh, cold on Saturday. It's <laughs> funny. I had some folks down on the sideline that, were, that told me about four minutes left to go in the game that it was coming. So I thought I dodged it. But, uh, you know, just, just a great day all around. Not only for us. I tell you, our marching band does a tremendous job. The students have have got behind this bunch, and, and to play at home for a championship was was pretty incredible for everybody. Well, let's take a look back at the uh, scene on Saturday at Absinthe Stadium for the 2016 PSAC Championship game won by the California Vulcans. And after the break, we'll break down, and it sounds good to say, the NCAA playoffs that are going to be here in two weeks. You're watching the Gary Dunn Show on CU TV. Here, handing off to John Franklin. Franklin has an easy hole to the end zone. In the gun, looking to pass. Here, plenty of time, airing it to the end zone, and that is complete in the back of the end zone for Gary Brown. Takes the snap, looking to pass. Going into the end zone to Luke Smorey, and there he is. Looking to pass. Here, going into the end zone. It is complete there, and everyone in front of us cheering. looking to pass. Goes to Gary Brown. Gary Brown gets into the end zone untouched for the California touchdown. As Keir looking to pass. Throwing it over the middle and it is caught for the touchdown. Prather handing off to Wheeler. 
Wheeler with his speed finds a hole and there's the touchdown Wheeler's been looking for. And as Coach Gary Dunn gets mixed with water and Gatorade, that's one for the ages. The 2016 Pennsylvania State Athletic Conference champions right here, the California Vulcans. Exciting Vulcan football is back this fall. September 10th at Cheney. September 17th versus Millersville. September 24th at Seton Hill. October 1st versus Slippery Rock. October 8th versus Indiana. October 15th at Clarion. October 22nd versus Gannon. October 29th at Mercyhurst. November 5th versus Edinburgh. November 12th versus East Stroudsburg. Catch all the action on CUTV and WCAL. CUTV's High School Football Game of the Week. Spring Doe at Jeff Morgan. Avella at California. Bell Vernon at Ringgold. Greensburg Central Catholic at Charleroi. Waynesburg at Southmoreland. Baldwin at Connellsville. Beth Center at Brownsville. Frazier at Bentworth. Bishop Canavan at Carmichael. The longest running high school coverage in Southwestern PA is on CUTV. CU TV News Center is California University of Pennsylvania's award-winning student television newscast. Your source for live, local, late-breaking news. Forecasts from the Cal U Weather Center. The region's latest entertainment news. Balkan sports highlights and regional scoreboards with television news coverage you can't get anywhere else. Watch it live Thursdays on CU TV and on demand. CU TV News Center, online all the time. And welcome back to the Gary Dunn Show. Coach and I were breaking down the uh, selection process, and we'll talk about that in full in a little bit. But, uh, Coach, you know, Saturday you guys take care of business, uh, undefeated regular season. Uh, you can count on one hand the number of times Kyle has finished the regular season undefeated. So that's a great testament to, to you and your staff and your team to, to, you know, set them all up and knock them all down. Uh, you celebrate on Saturday, and then Sunday, uh, just take us through the day. I know the team had a watch party here. Uh, what was that like just waiting to find out uh, where you knew, obviously you knew you were going to be in the NCAA playoffs, but just talk about what it's like waiting to, to find out where you're going to play and what the schedule is. Yeah, I, I thought it was awesome. I, I wanted us to all be together, and, and that's why we threw the watch party. We were able to invite the cheerleaders and the dance team and, and fans that from town, you know, and some just regular students showed up for us. And, and, and it, I thought it was a lot of fun that we all kind of find out together where we were going and who we'd who we'd play, and then obviously we got the good news of being the one seed, which is I just wanted us to all kind of enjoy that that time together, and I thought it really was. I think our guys appreciated it, and it was just a fun afternoon to, to kind of put that part of the season behind us. We just had a team meeting here a little bit ago, and we're moving on. You know, I told them enjoy it today, and, and when we get up to practice today at 3.30, it's time to move on. and, and you know, not stop patting ourselves on the back and, and move on and, and let's prepare for our next game. And that next game is going to be in, a, from where we're shooting this, about a week and a half. It'll be Thanksgiving weekend. We'll talk about that in full, about where to get. Obviously, you know, the destination is going to be Adamson Stadium, uh, but the opponent is yet to be determined. Um, and, Coach, on Saturday, like you said, the team was all together with the watch party. Um, what, when the, uh, the brackets came out, what were your thoughts, were you, when it, seeing how it uh, lined up? I, I, I was pleased. You know, I was glad that we got the one seed. It kind of shook out the way we thought it would. You know, there, there's a lot of really, really good football teams in this region. And there were some good football teams in this region that, that unfortunately didn't make the postseason. But when you look at, the, and I'm sure you guys will have the graphic, when you look at, you've got three unbeaten teams in the region right now. You've got Indiana, who's 9-1. and one. You've got Assumption, who has two losses. I mean, it's, it's, it's a really tough region. And, and it kind of played out like we thought it would. Um, and and we're, we're just concerned about us being in and, and, and glad to get the number one seed. The rest of it will all work itself out. Well, before we really look at the bracket, we're going to take a look back at the, uh, the scores and standings because that kind of plays into the selection for the, uh, the committee on sun, or Saturday and Sunday, Saturday night and Sunday. Uh, and, of course, Saturday, this past Saturday, was championship weekend and also cross, the final crossover weekend. Um, so it was the last chance for teams that were on the bubble maybe to make a statement. Um, we'll look on there at bubble team. None of the bubble teams on this list were a bubble team, really, but Westchester beating Clarion. Millersville uh, fighting against Gannon pretty hard, but Gannon getting the win. Of course, the best score on the, 
the scoreboard right there, California 49-7 to over Quidstown to win the title. And then Mercyhurst all over Lockhaven. That was a little bit of a surprise because Lockhaven had been playing a lot uh, better lately, but Mercyhurst mm -hmm. at home is always a tough place to play. Uh, and then we look at the other side of the, uh, the scores over the past weekend. Uh, Shippensburg over Seton Hill. Edinburgh was a team that was on the bubble. Um, they finished 9-2, 5-2 in the conference, uh, putting it to, to Cheney 66-8 to um, to try and make a final statement for the committee. Then IEP uh, with one loss, 42-13 to over Bloom. Um, probably going into that game, we're pretty confident that they were going to have their name called on Sunday. And then uh, East Stroudsburg and Slippery Rock. Uh, Slippery Rock taking out some frustrations. It's been a long year for them finishing 7-4 and 3-4. And, and let's look at how the final PSAC standings uh, fleshed out California as we saw nothing none of this really changed but you can see California 10 and 0 and that looks great over there see the the goose egg on the right column but IEP 9 and 1 Edinburgh 9 and 2 both of those teams uh, going into Sunday in the selection thought that you know they had a chance sure and we'll look at that uh, in a second but you know 9 and 1 9 and 2 7 and 4 4 and 7 that, that's just a tough division yeah you know in the west took 6 out of 8 this week uh, from the east and in, in you know, a lot of good football teams on there. You know, Edinburgh is an extremely well-balanced team, well-coached team, and, and, you know, unfortunate that they didn't get in because I thought maybe they had a chance. Uh, but you can't take everybody, I guess. Now let's look at, uh, over at the PSAC East, how that finished out. Um, it said 7-4, 8-3, 7-4. So first time in a while that the PSAC East won't be represented uh, in the NCAA playoffs. And let's go right into the bracket uh, since, so we can talk a little bit more about what's going to happen in the next coming weeks, California with the number one overall seed will get the bye, and California will be hosting um, a playoff game. Thanksgiving weekend, you see Super Region 1, California the bye. Uh, the game we're going to probably be paying most attention to as a California fan and you as a coaching staff will be on Saturday, just about an hour and 15 minutes south of here in Fairmont, IUP at Fairmont. And Coach, you've seen IUP up close and personal, and I'm sure you've seen a little bit of film on Fairmont State so far. Um, first with IEP coming into this game, you know, what, if you're a football fan, what, what should a fan look for in that contest? You know, two really good football teams going at it. Both those teams, I, I believe Fairmont's 10-1, and Indiana's 9-1. and Fairmont State's only loss is the Shepherd who's unbeaten. And, and of course, we were fortunate to get Indiana here. Um, you know, just a really good football game between two really well-coached teams. Anxious to see, obviously, we're we're on pins and needles <laughs> waiting to see who we get to play. But uh, two, two good football teams, and that, that should be a heck of a game. And then in the other game, Shepard will be hosting Assumption. Uh, and, I, you know, as fans, when we were talking, you know, we weren't sure how uh, the final three spots would work out because Assumption uh, got beat by the number two LIU post for the second time. They got thumped pretty good. Uh, we thought maybe Edinburgh might hold that, hold that spot. And then Winston-Salem, uh, they jumped up to eighth in the region, and they actually bumped out Edinburgh, who was seventh due to earned access. So they get – a date with uh, Long Island Post up on Long Island, and I hope they leave themselves a lot of time to get there because we did that trip a couple years ago, and it's tough to get to Long Island Post from uh, any points. I, I could imagine, you know, Shepard's playing extremely well right now. You know, they had a great year last year and, and unbeaten again this year. You know, Assumption has two losses to a really good LIU Post team that we actually saw uh, against Kutztown, and then you got Winston Salem State in LIU Post. It's you know, this time of year, everybody's a good ball club. We talk to our guys about preparing and our habits and things that we do are, are to beat the best people. And, and we're excited to be in the field and back in the NCAA playoffs uh, for the first time in a while and, and just excited to get rolling and, and see who we play. And going into the playoffs, Coach, and, and you know, number one seed, you guys are off this week. You know, not off, you'll be practicing no game this week. Sure. But uh, just talk a little bit about, you know, for the other coaching staffs and just in general, you know, this is the one time of year, just with the scheduling, it seems like, you know, the PSAC plays mainly PSAC teams. Um, so this is the first time, you know, you're going to be playing teams from out of the conference. What's that preparation like, playing a team? Is, are the styles that much different in the different conferences or just a matter of watching film? Yeah. And no, preparation really remains the same. Our focus is going to be on California, and, and we're really going to take this week to, to practice and, and practice our – the things that we need to work on and there's a bunch we need to work on and we're excited to have that opportunity but our preparation will be the same I went through we had a meeting today at 11 o'clock I went through our schedule for the next two weeks of, of when we're practicing when we're meeting what we're going to be doing how we're going to do it so our guys understand where we're at and, and hopefully today at 3 30 we'll have a great practice and, and really take advantage of having a week where we don't have a game to really focus on California getting better and how important is it to have that week off? Because obviously this time of year, you know, you guys have been going hard since 
first week of August, second week of August. Now it's like 13 weeks, 14 weeks. Sure. You know, a little bit of nicks and, and dings up. How important that is just to get some guys healthy and get, you know, rested going into the – because right now, you know, every game is do or die. Absolutely. And our guys are excited, uh, you know, but if we'd have lined up and played this week, we'd have been ready to play. Uh, but I think we, we, we told them it's a reward for their hard work throughout the whole year. And, you know, we, we'd have been ready to play Saturday, but we're not going to turn the bye down in, in the open week to, to, again, focus on us, our fundamentals, our techniques, and, and our understanding to, to get better. And, Coach, uh, we talked about, like I said, we got the bye this week. Um, the first game, first playoff game will be Thanksgiving weekend, and every week we uh, try and get the fans out. What do we got to do this? In, in two weeks, it's Thanksgiving weekend. Uh, students are going to be gone, so we need even more support from uh, the local community because we've seen against the IEP game, playoff game, or the uh, championship game, when that stadium's rocking, it's, it's a huge home field advantage. Absolutely. You know, and hopefully some of the students will be back. I know we've got a... You know, a lot of students that live fairly close and they can come back and join us. I know the marching band is going to be here with us and the cheerleaders, but we do need the Mon Valley to come out and, and support this bunch. Uh, we'd love to have you bring your leftovers and, and everyone <laughs> throw a turkey a turkey leftover tailgate out in the parking lot before the game. And, and yeah, that might be dangerous. My people might be falling asleep on the way. Might have to get them out there, some of that trip to fan. Because I know after I have some turkey, I'm out on Thursday, or Thursday afternoon. Uh, but that game, Coach, uh, will be Saturday, November 26th, and you were mentioning you had your conference call today, probably going to be at 1 o'clock? 1 o'clock start okay. uh, here at Adamson, so just excited to get it here. It's, it's, it's going to be a long couple weeks before we get this thing kicked off. So make sure to keep going to calvalkins.com just to stay in touch with everything going into the playoffs because, you know, playoffs is probably the most exciting time of the year in any sport, and like we've mentioned, every game is do or die, winner goes on, loser goes home type of thing. So like I said, check out. Uh, CalValkins.com, Matt Kiefer and his staff will do a great job of keeping everybody up to date. That game will be on uh, 91.9 FM online, and then CUTV will be broadcasting that game as well. So, um, But best way to see it is to bundle up. Like the Coach said, bring your turkey. Maybe bring a little bit of, of chocolate bars or some candy just to stay awake, but uh, come out to Adamson on that Saturday. Absolutely. We'd love to have you. It's, it, it's been a lot of fun, and we're going to keep this thing rolling and, and see how far we can go. Uh, our guys are, are, are prepared and, and ready to go, so we're excited. And so that's, that's all we can say about this week. So congratulations, Coach, once again on the 2016 PSAC Championship. And uh, that's one chapter closed, another chapter opening with the NCAA playoffs. And in two weeks, on November 26th, come out to Adamson Stadium uh, to cheer on the Vulcans. And, um, Coach, any final thoughts? No, just appreciate the coverage you guys give us all, all year. It's been great coming up here, especially, you know, anytime you win 10 games and sit here and talk about <laughs> wins, it's, it's been a lot of fun. But I wanted to thank the fans, especially the students and the alumni. Our alumni turnout this past weekend was great. I mean, they, they took a picture before the game of all the former players and former Vulcans that were here. And it, it's just special to see the kind of the outreach and the, and the folks that are supporting us right now. It's been a lot of fun, and, and we're going to get back to work this afternoon. And, Coach, we'll let you get back to work. Now, you may have to sneak out of here. I don't know if the guys in the back have any more Gatorade. Uh, they they, no, they I were got planning you. something. I got <laughs> you dress to get pants out on now. You can't do that to me. <laughs> Sounds good. Well, Coach, good luck in two weeks. And, uh, like I said, we'll hope to see a lot of fans at Adamson Stadium for the NCAA playoffs. For Coach Dunn, I'm Gary Smith. You're watching the Gary Dunn Show right here on CUTV. Thank <laughs> you.